hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Keep It Moving Podcast. I am your host, Novelty, and Mike B is sitting here looking at me with a weird smirk on his face. Why? What do you do? Uh, <laughs> That's why? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I guess I wasn't ready for you to start, but yes. Oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Go ahead. Well, hey, boo-boo to you, too. Ain't no way. Hey, boo-boo, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Not much. What's going on with you? It's, you know, it's always the same old, same old with me. Trying to give me some energy, trying to stay awake. Yeah, uh, it's one of those weekends. Yeah, quit turning away from the mic and talking to it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those weekends. Yeah. I, yeah, I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no energy, no nothing, no, no excitement, nothing going on in your life, no stories of your grandmother. Same old, same old. Nope, I, I don't have any stories of granny. Not this week. Oh, okay. Well, Nothing happened in my world either, so I guess we're two boring people this day. Well, I'm usually not. Uh, now I have to see. Now I see how it feels to be like you. Uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. No, you wouldn't. Anyway. Anyway. Well, then let's just get on, get it started, get it moving. This week for Black Achievements and Excellence, we are awarding to 24-year-old Sloan Stevens, who completed her epic run through the 2017 U.S. Open over Madison Keys. This uh, I think it just happened today. Mm-hmm. It says this is not only her first career Grand Slam, but she's also the first American woman other than Venus and Serena Williams, also two Black Achievements and Excellent women, uh, to win a major since Jennifer Cap- Capriati in 2002. And they said she was ranked 934 last month. And she, when she entered, entered the tournament, she was ranked 83, but then shocked everyone to win, to win. the championship. So Sister Girl was really putting in the work. Shout that out to be you. One of the Williams sisters. Uh, it must have been uh, Serena. One. Or no, I get Venus. confused. Which one just had a baby? One of them just had a baby, so I know it wasn't her. I don't know which one because I get confused. <laughs> I think it, was, it had to be Venus. I think Venus is like the younger sister. Okay. And I think Serena is the one who we see every now and then on Beyonce videos twerking. So, okay, uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, so again, shout out to Sloan Stevens. Woo! Congratulations to you. We honor you. All right. Great to hear. Well... Did you see the picture of Michelle Obama uh, dressed as Beyonce in formation? I did. Well, at least her, from her neck up. <laughs> right. I saw her. I saw Kelly Rowland. I saw it was a lot of women honoring uh, Beyonce for her, for her birthday. birthday. Yeah, uh, I thought that cool. was pretty cool. Yeah, it was nice to see her outside of the first lady. Right. It's, it's good to kind of just see who she is outside of that. Right. Um, and that she, you know, has a sense of humor. She's down to earth. Uh, she has friends. <laughs> right. I, I saw her in, uh, she, they were uh, getting ready to get on some ship, some yacht, somebody's yacht. I don't know. I wish I was invited. But anyway. Um, I don't know had, if I uh, would talk about being on a yacht with this type of weather. You know, I'm, well, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> well, it may have been an old picture and they were just showing it. But she had a, they, she was showing a lot of leg and a lot of arm. She had on a swimsuit and a little Oh yeah, up. yeah, I saw and that. They were it looked like the wind was blowing was too. Show, uh, I'm like, like oh, she looks really, gonna slow down. Especially for her, for I hate to say this, but for her age, she's 53. She doesn't look it at oh, all. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that. I, she, I would all. assume you know at the oldest, like maybe 44 or something I like knew. that. She looked and she looks very good. She does. She looks very good. Um. Also, um. Yeah, you know, last week we talked about DACA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Trump doing what he did. Well. Mr. But had he, I don't think he had done it at that point, but that was his intentions. Was it his intentions? Well, then he's done it. <laughs> he has, um, basically, he says that Congress has six months. Yeah, because yeah, you, cause you mentioned that. DACA. Okay. Be, yeah, you did mention that, so I'm sorry. Okay, so now, oh, that made Obama speak out. Uh-huh. You know, he's been pretty silent for this first horrendous, what, eight, nine months now? For, yeah, for the most part, until you know, 45 does something tremendously stupid, like and the whole did. immigration situation. <laughs> I think he came out and said something yes, about that. And too. Basically he's called it, he, he called it, um, cruel and self-defeating. I agree. But I mean, this is just who this guy is. I feel like we say it every time we have an opportunity to record, 
we we are talking about the the crazy stuff that he does that's so divisive when he has every opportunity to bring Americans together. He just refuses to do it. Well, shockingly. And these, and these are, you know, these are immigrants. And these people, because of everything they have to go through in order to maintain their uh, certificate, these aren't the people you should be targeting. So that doesn't make right. any sense to me. Doing, right. They're doing what they're supposed right. to do. Whereas others are not and i'm not saying every single one of them every single one of them that's not trying to maintain some type of uh, citizenship is doing something they're not supposed to right a lot of them are afraid to come out right these were the ones that that took it upon themselves to follow the government who said if you come out of the shadows we will protect you and they did just that they trusted in our government and now our government is kicking them in the butt well, I, yes, it, we have to say our government now, but I'm blaming yeah. one guy. Uh, well, I blame that one guy, too, but, <laughs> but still. But the government has to follow suit anyway. But funny, <clears throat> Agent Orange made a deal with the Democrats. Uh -huh. he, he made a deal to raise the debt ceiling and to fund Congress for three more months. Right, until December or something like that. Yes, while also providing relief for Hurricanes Irma and Harvey. Uh, was Irma mentioned in that yes. situation? Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was what I heard fifteen billion dollars in relief or something like that. I think that was just for Harvey. I don't know if it was a separate amount for Irma, uh huh, or if that was for them join it joined together. But I, I'm I'm thinking it was just for Harvey that number. And I was but reading a lot. Of I it. was reading today that some uh, because it was being basically touted as a hurricane relief uh, budget or whatever the fifteen billion dollars. And then you were I was reading about some senators, uh, Republican of course that voted against harvey relief and it's like w really but then you know they their reason for doing it or a lot of them stated that their reason for doing it was because of the deal that was struck regarding the funding the government for three months they had an issue with that part even being attached as to well it as raising the uh, debt ceiling yes that's Most what they Republicans had uh, did an have issue, an with. issue with that but it's, I mean, how can you not vote for this when you know these people are going are displaced they're going to need help to some degree, I can kind of understand that because what if they would have put funding Harvey relief with the border wall? Well, then the Democrats wouldn't have, they wouldn't have done it. Right. They wouldn't have done it. But so uh, I guess I would need to know your excuse for not wanting the uh, debt ceiling to be increased. We increase in the debt ceiling. We increase in our debt. We're making our putting ourselves in a worse situation. We're but not if the government tackling. shuts down, then what do you do? Uh, hey, so. I agree. <laughs> I mean, I agree with where you're coming from. I really do. But uh, which one is the the bigger crisis? I think personally, I think they should have just had one issue fund her, her, her Harvey and Irma, Irma relief. I feel like they, they don't think that they can push anything through Without that's just one thing. Some, it's always some other shit attached to it. they don't feel like they can get the other stuff attached unless they t attach it to something bigger. And I think that's something that needs to stop. I remember back during um, when Clinton was president, he was one of those trying to get them to stop tagging extra stuff into bills. Yeah. You could, what, the they, what are they called? Like thing. pork or something like that? Some I don't know extra, what it's called. Extra crap, but yeah. Stop putting extra crap in the bill because we don't know what's all tagged into this bill and then we find out something a lot way down the line that's wrong and should have never gone through and it's like well how did this happen and you come to find out it was attached to a bigger bill so and th that also you know when we hear about they want to stop doing it uh, stop doing this or repeal this or repeal that a lot of times it's not because of the bigger issue it's because of those small the things that were attached to it between, that we right. just don't know anything about and, right. and so they look like assholes which most of them are in my opinion but yeah, for this is this that is crap in. Well, yeah you know that crap we don't want it anyway um but he also agent orange that is followed nancy pelosi's suggestion and tweeted out that DACA recipients right now are safe from deportation at least for the next six months now i want to know what the catch is the fact that like what was the discussion between the democrats and him to I, where I he's know, to where he's siding with them yeah right now Somebody maybe he's trying he to punish tired. the republicans he should be tired <laughs> but he ain't i mean but he hasn't done anything he, he should be tired of tweeting he's done a lot of that he should be tired of lying <laughs> He's done a lot of that. I, I don't know. But as far but as work, he's done because I don't. It don't that. take much to just say, okay, I want to stop doing what the black man did. You know, I want to repeal that's this. And that's that's, and that's it. But done. you haven't introduced anything of anything substance. New, haven't introduced anything new. Haven't tackled any of the issues that we're actually having. You're just trying to undo everything that 
Obama did. And now the next they're trying getting ready to undo um, the Obama uh, sanctions on sexual uh, sexual assault, assault in, in schools. on campuses. Yeah. It's like, really? How can you even, how can, in a straight face, yes. take that away? And that's uh, Betsy DeVos. Is that her name? Yeah. It's like, I'm looking at this woman, and this is what you're spearheading? This is what you're after? So, you you know, in my mind, I'm thinking there must be more to it, nope. because nothing about that makes sense. Obama is the only thing next to it. Mm. I mean, as a woman, <laughs> why wouldn't you want uh, a black man c- campuses said. to uh, be able to work with police to report it? Like, it doesn't make sense. It. That's it. And she feels, uh, well, okay, whatever. So, um, in the wake of Hurricane Harvey, all five living for, um, former presidents have come together uh-huh. and they created an ad supporting relief and recovery for Harvey victims in Texas. And I thought that was so cool. Yeah, to see all it's like all these guys who just do not give a shit about 45 <laughs> coming together and actually being presidential. Right. I, I uh, feel like it was a slap in his face because oh, they didn't invite I'm him. I'm sure they probably didn't even tell him <laughs> nothing about it. He, he started getting the tweets. Uh, has he even said anything about it, like tried to come after oh, them or call them this or whatever? Uh, I'm sure he was cussing when he saw or, or heard about it. And it was just really nice to see both parties yeah. come together. I who mean, was you, the, I saw uh, 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 Clinton, uh, Obama, Bush, Bush, and who was the other one? Carter. Jimmy Jimmy Carter? Mm-hmm. For some reason, I thought he passed away a while ago. No. He looked, now he looks old, mm. but... I yeah. guess I guess he's, <laughs> he's he's still alive. But yeah, I mean, it was just really nice to see all five of them come together. And two of them I really didn't like. The Bushes. Yes, but <laughs> you know now I like them. Yeah, because they now they I can't really them. affect you. And then they're doing things positive. There aren't they are political in nature, but they don't have anything to do with and politics. Even if they were in office, I still think I would like them better than what I got right now. That's the problem. Mm. Um, so also, did you all hear about the 8.1 magnitude earthquake that hit Mexico? Yes. Killed, leaving at least 67 people dead right now. How, how, how 67. many? 67. Okay. I'm sure we didn't send no kind of help. And that's a sad. And I hate That's that. a sad situation. Uh, if they did, they should have at least said something because Mexico was very open about wanting to help us with our situation. Right. Because that's what neighbors do. You help each other. So for us to not, even if. Why would I, mean, I expect I can't anything say for sure that <laughs> Texas didn't say, hey, you know what? Like uh, the or states on their the own. The Red Cross didn't say, hey. The Red was, Cross has been getting slammed it, here lately. Well, yeah, and I can understand. I can kind of understand that. But it was Mexico's Red Cross that came up to help. So but um, I hope I hope at some in some kind of manner we help. It's gonna. Because it's not gonna come from us. the administration, though. No, it has to come from some local or state government. Just trying to be neighborly. Yeah. So I just fingers crossed. Um, but they are definitely in in my prayers, and I hope yours too. Right. Um, Irma is currently making landfall in Florida after pulverizing Cuba, Turks and Caicos, St. Bart, St. Thomas, and completely destroying this little island called Barbuda. Now let me tell you, I didn't know Barbuda existed until I'm scrolling through my news and I see. 95 percent of barbuda is destroyed right they have completely evacuated the entire island nobody has a home to go back to that's sad i mean people there are still people like you were just saying about hurricane irma and people in florida not really wanting to evacuate or not taking heed of the seriousness of the situation and we have to you know remember that some people just don't have the not just the funds, but don't have a way, you know, they don't have vehicles or whatever, just can't get away. So they have to do what they have to do. I saw lines upon lines of people in Florida trying to get into the shelter. And one of my coworkers, we were looking at the video f- uh, footage, it was aerial footage, looking at all these people lined up. And it seemed like it went on for forever. He's like, how long would you wait in that line before you gave up? Oh, well, I mean, not only that, the lines for gas. And yeah, the high and the high. They were seeing photos long. of highways, people trying to actually leave and evacuate highways back to people hearing mm-hmm. about people running running out of gas on the highways, price gouging as far as the gas is concerned. Right, I How saw flights that? from uh, somebody showed a picture of some flight information of people trying to leave Florida, and tickets were like fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred dollars one way. Who could afford that? 
And right. I think it was was maybe it was Spirit Airlines or it, there was an airline that came out like, hey, for people trying to leave, uh, the max they ticket is like 50 capping, bucks or yeah, whatever. They started capping uh, tickets at some point. Um, the airline that did that, I know in Florida it's illegal. To what? Cap? To, to price gouge. Oh, okay. So, um, they were trying to say that they weren't price gouging. It was, I guess, the demand. I mean, and that was on. one way. I could see if maybe you was trying to go to uh, to L.A. I could see if you were trying to go to another country <laughs> and not Mexico or Canada, but the U.K., uh, Antarctica, somewhere like far. Then I can yeah, see, uh, cra- but I mean, not even crazy. a one-way ticket. You can, I can go to our, uh, Africa for less than fifteen hundred round trip. Well, hopefully the uh, FAA will look into that. Um, if not them, the authorities in Florida will look into that after everything settles because they need to be fined for that. Period. And I just hate it. It's just a fine. I feel like head should roll. I agree. People should. I mean, you should, should be know a fine big enough to make the corporation make heads. Roll. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it should exactly. be a huge fine for that fifteen hundred to get out of there. Yeah, we get people life charged a billion dollar, find a billion dollars, then oh, I'm definitely firing some folk. But the sad part was even so many flights. I think it was like over thirty flights that had been canceled. So even those people who had tickets, some of them never did get out. And then what do you do? They were uh, if you were at the airport, they bust you to a shelter. Oh, okay. It, Lord it's have mercy. It, it's a and, lot and, going and on right now. The reality is, it hadn't even hit. It made right. landfall yet, and so now it's just starting it with to make landfall. You got tornadoes going around in um, Florida now, but the bad part about it, you know, Rush Limbaugh over the years has said that hurricanes are a conspiracy. He says the storms like that are a liberal conspiracy, solely aimed at furthering the discussion on climate, climate change. change. Yeah, yeah. Well, this week he then lost his marbles. He says, here comes a hurricane. Local media goes on the air. Big hurricanes coming. Oh, my God. Make sure you got batteries. Make sure you got water. I could, it could be the worst ever. Have you seen the size of this baby? It's already a cat five. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's bigger than the island of Haiti. Oh, my God. People run to the stores. They stock up on everything. They hoard and they end up with vacant store, vacant stores. Nothing there. And it's a big success. TV stations got eyeballs. Advertising businesses have sold out of business. Got to restock and the cycle repeats itself. All you need is to create the fear and panic accompanied by talk that climate change is causing hurricanes to become more frequent and bigger and more dangerous. And you create the panic and it's mission accomplished, agenda advanced. So basically he's saying that all this talk about this hurricane is bullshit is BS. And they just try It's like a marketing scheme. Right. They just trying to get you to go buy something. But then he tweets out that okay i'm evacuating <laughs> so some, really something <laughs> happened to where now he believes it and i kept seeing video of i think it was the governor down there like hey we ain't finna i'm not gonna risk the lives of first responders when i'm telling you guys to leave and if you decide to stay that's your ass that's, that's right. on you and that's on you and we uh, are not coming to help now he, I, he, I understand it a little bit now, I get what he's saying when he says, you know, we create panic. And if as far you, as Rush, you, Rush Limbaugh? You, yeah, you create fear and that makes people do things. You're right. I, to, to some degree, when ISIS takes claim for half the stuff that goes around in the world, all I think is, really, did you have anything to do with that? But or they, are you they know just taking the power responsibility of to create the fear? Yeah. I think in a lot of ways, our government creates fear fear yeah especially when That's, there's how a, do you think 45 got in office right. especially when there's they a use those same race. tactics they use those same tactics to create fear but i ain't never going to take our guns they're going to take our guns obama's going to take our guns but i have never seen a meteorologist decide i'm going to create fear and panic and say here come a hurricane when it's not right and because uh when the, every now the and then hasn't come up the dang on come across the ocean you know, every now and then they may be off saying, you know, it's going to be a 30 percent or 60 percent chance of rain and it may not rain. But to predict a hurricane, they are always <laughs> spot on. It's coming. I mean, they pretty much they said that, that's this your job. Hurricane You're was losing your in job. Saturday and in the Sunday it's just now starting. They said late Saturday. So I think it, it's a few hours earlier than anticipated. They said it was going to come in as a category four right before it hit Cuba. It was a category five. Then as it went over Cuba, it kind of knocked it down to a category three. But they're they still thinking by the time it hits landfall, it might go back up to okay. a category five. Mm-hmm. 
I'm sorry. Right now, I believe them over Rush Limbaugh any day. And so what? I stocked up on water. So what? I stocked up on batteries. I, I'm going to use them I, at some There's point no anyway. threat of a hurricane here. And I got a, a whole bunch of lighters. I got a whole bunch of batteries. <laughs> <laughs> I got shit that everybody says I don't need. But... but but it's not hurting me to have them. Now, here's the thing. Even in Florida, the, the governor said, stock up on food, have at least three days worth. And all I'm thinking is, well, shoot, every other week I get two weeks worth of food. How do you people shop? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand it. And so, you know. A lot of people don't shop, though, for the week. They just shop for like a yeah, see, dinner. No, you I'm know, shopping and then for the week. They go on the next know. day. I ain't got that kind of time. My little brother, I call him because he's in Georgia with my sisters. And I said, hey, you know, they're saying that a lot of that storm is going to come up there. So um, you might want to go and get, you know, just some water to have and a few days worth of food. Yeah, you before know. they raise the price on the water and all right. that stuff. And, and before a lot of people get out there. And I said, and please tell my sisters, because one of them, she'll never know. She dips it in a Betsy bug and she just, woohoo, yes, everything's fine. Where all this rain come from? <laughs> so <laughs> um, she she's just kind of that one. So I'm like, you know, call her, tell her, y'all go at least get, you know, a few days worth of food and water. Because I know y'all, y'all don't shop like me. I'm the only one that got food to last me for two weeks. I go to the grocery store every two weeks. I'm not going in between. For what? <laughs> I just eat some chips and be like, I'm you done. Be all right? <laughs> <laughs> so when the meteorologists say bad weather, please believe them. It, uh, they Especially don't when have it, when to it, it's prove something, climate change. It's, it's proving, proving itself. itself. There is. The only people that are trying to disprove climate change are the people that consistently lie to you. Right. So why <laughs> right. would you why would you start to believe them? They've I mean been lying from day one. So whatever. And I you know what? He could have stayed in Florida. I wouldn't have cared. Me too. <laughs> and that's all I'm thinking. Why, and it's like you're you're, you're saying evacuate? all of this stuff and making people believe that it's not real. So they're probably not evacuating because this is great hoax. So you're putting people's lives in danger. And I guarantee he didn't think or take that into consideration. Well, and the thing is, I've been looking at, you know, all the different models for the storm from multiple channels. And this hurricane is going to cover the entire state of Florida. I've never seen anything like this just from the models that they show. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sorry. I'm not willing to risk my life. And those people who stayed in the Keys, it, 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 it find a bus, even if, I mean, hurricanes, you know, in advance. You know, it's not like a tornado that just pop up. Right. And then you got But even run. some of them, they, they, they notice the cloud patterns sometimes. Like it's unusual weather. Right. You know, it's, it's warm but, and I mean, humid all of a sudden. Very few, we have very little warning when uh, yeah, it comes to right. a tornado. But Hurricanes, we've been talking about this they for know weeks uh, at least, in <laughs> advance. <laughs> yeah. Okay, they said this hurricane was six months in the making. They've been watching this sucker for six months. They started saying, hey, y'all, we getting ready. This some stuff's about to go down before Harvey was even over. And you still in the keys? It ain't going to be no keys after this. I mean, they might be there, but they're going to be very interesting. They're going to be like Barbuda. Mm -mm -mm. I, I, there's no reason for you to be there. If you Pack if you up. have the ability to leave, right. there's no reason to be there. If you don't have the ability to leave, there were several different government facilities that would have come picking you up, picked you up, and take you, taking you somewhere. You know, especially like, I know at one point Florida was evacuating um people um handicapped people people in wheelchairs people who were bedridden and couldn't move they were evacuating them the state they were was. i saw them even going to get animals uh yes. and trying to protect the marina uh, marine animals i'm sorry uh so i mean they're they're out there they're trying disney world closed when disney world closed <laughs> it's bad because hurricanes don't, don't normally hit orlando because it's so far inland and when they said disney world was closing they've only closed four times what were the it's other? time to go, hurricanes. Okay. It's time to go. <laughs> so if you in Florida, my heart goes out to you. I pray for you. I really hope you make it out, make it through. If you in shelters, I really hope you make it through. I hope y'all are safe and come out on the other end of this. And I hope that it's you're not so financially strapped that when you do come out on the end of this, you don't have anything and nowhere to go. Right. So, I mean, you in my prayers, and but if you just didn't leave, you're still in my prayers, but I'm calling you crazy. 
I ain't nothing wrong with it. And isn't there supposed to be another couple hurricanes Jose coming? Jose is now a hurricane and Katia is in the Gulf of Mexico. It's three of them on the globe right now. That's crazy. And they say climate change ain't real. Anywho, so I don't know who this guy plays for, but Michael Bennett uh-huh. plays in the NFL. I didn't he, know you were going to say you didn't know who he played for. I thought you had a, your article don't uh-oh. tell you who he played for. You know, for. it's like it goes in my <laughs> head, and then I'm like, okay, I don't even know. I mean, it could have gave me a team, and I still wouldn't have known who it was. Okay, Michael Bennett, NFL, go ahead. But anyway, so um, he um, actually posted a nice letter, basically, on Instagram. I don't want to call it, I guess it wasn't a nice letter. But just kind of describing his experience in Las Vegas after the fight evidently some the, uh, went McGregor down. and uh, Floyd Mayweather fight yes evidently some went down out there and you know everybody started running you know how black people are so we, somebody was shooting because that's you oh no oh, we just saw somebody down, running somebody was running and then, so it's time to run there you go black people <laughs> run so he like everybody else just started running and the police stopped grabbed him uh-huh Threw him down on the ground, handcuffed him. They got video and everything, talking to him crazy, threw him in the truck, and eventually somebody realized who he was and let him go. But only but, because they realized who he was. Right. But he, you know, d- describes his story of how he was thrown to the ground and how he was treated by cops. And, you know, one of the points he made was that no matter how much money I got, no matter who you, I yeah. am, and I'm that's what still we keep trying to tell these black people who come out here and there. It's nothing wrong with being pro cop, but then to be against your people as if we're the ones doing everything wrong and there's all these cops are legit and they're doing what they're supposed to do. That's stupid to me because at the end of the day, it could be you. You're still black and they see that first before they see your credentials, before they see your pocket, you know, your bank book, any of that, but your black card. And I'm okay. talking about the one that they you swipe. your black skin first. They, exactly. The very first thing anybody, for anybody who sits there and says they colorblind, they lying. Unless they truly colorblind. And even still, uh, even if they you can see black and yeah. white. You, you, you see me. <laughs> you can still see black and white. So that, there, there's no truth to that. I'm not colorblind. I see color. Because I can't, I, there's no way I cannot notice your color. However, I may treat every person right. the same way, regardless of color. Right. And this gentleman got treated like shit. Shit. Like they always treat black men. And then uh, what did he say? Like somebody pointed a gun and said, like, I'll blow your head off or something yes. like that. Cop told him, you move, I'll blow, move or I'll blow your head off. Mm-mm. I mean, it's like, really? So, and then they still pissed off at the fact that people are protesting. Uh, some of right, these players are protesting in the, the NFL. Oh uh, yeah, they they're still pissed off at him. But um, uh, because they Sunday, they're looking at him as the problem because he's causing the distraction to their game. I don't give a fuck about that. Well, game. this a lot more players have been kneeling, and this Sunday, Marcus Peters from the Kansas City Chiefs uh-huh. sat sat down and d- refused to get up. Yeah, I heard he's been. So, they've been trying to give it to him online as well. People are pissed off at the fact that he's protesting. Uh, well, and you, you know it's white folks. I'm sitting with you, Marcus Peters. I ain't even watching, so I had to hear about this. I didn't even right. Know. I've not seen an NFL game. I refuse and to I buy any a, uh, any kind of any paraphernalia, anything until I think that game Kaepernick was gets Thursday, a job. Though. Was it Thursday? I, think, I thought the first game of the season was Sunday. I think that it, it might have been Thursday. The Chiefs played Thursday because everybody was talking about it. Okay, it might have been Thursday. You know me. I don't know. Nothing, I don't know much <laughs> about sports. The sports guy is not here. But that's a good point. And I'm glad that he made it. That it doesn't matter how much money you have, you're still black to them. And if they don't have a penny or a pot to piss in, they still feel like they're better than you. Some people, some white people. And then with uh, having th- those white people with that mindset in positions of power or authority, then they're definitely going to try and use it over you. Right. And that's what the. Black Lives Matter movement is about. It's not a, just a group of people screaming Black Lives Matter. They're trying to get you to see that our lives should matter to everyone, just like your life matters to someone. And that brings me to my poll question. And my poll question, especially for our male viewers, it's kind of difficult. I would appreciate an honest answer. I promise you, I won't talk about you. We won't jump down your back if you say you're not. But I would actually like to know how many of our viewers are boycotting the nfl this year oh me I, I, i'm definitely boycotting <laughs> well, uh, but, but i think we talked about this considering uh, i could take it or leave it it doesn't really matter it, it I, now i did hear that the opening opening day 
the uh, numbers were down, I think, 13 percent or something like that. Good. So hopefully that number continues to grow. But all I see on my uh, news feed oh, is people, people talking, about, talking the about the game and people mentioning uh, you guys who are protesting, you, you guys are missing it and all of this crap. I'm not missing anything because I'm more focused on living. Uh, then watching a and when I'm saying living, I'm not talking about going outside and doing like skydiving no, and all that. Talking about <laughs> I'm physically talking about being, living. Just being alive, whether being I'm in my able house to or not. Breathe. Yeah. And you know, something should be done about what's being done to us. Uh, I feel like that's more important to me. So I would just honestly like, you know, just to honestly know if you're boycotting or if you. Just and it's not. Just, wait a minute. It's not just men that watch football because I see a okay, lot of women. OK, I'm sorry. Having right, this conversation. Right, right. They are Ladies, diehard too. NFL fans, too. So and Ladies, then I think most right, of our right. listeners, the majority of our listeners are women, I believe. So basically, uh, and we only got maybe one or two men. I I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, but, ladies, you, know, you too, definitely. I would love to hear how many people are boycotting the NFL this year, or at least until Kaepernick gets a job. And if you're not boycotting the NFL, are you maybe boycotting in a different way? You know, let us know right. that as well. That that would be great. Just uh, other ideas of how you're boycotting to, or other things that you're doing to make a difference and take a stand. Right on. Because it, wasn't it uh, Michael Evans from Good Times? If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. That's what he said. And boy, is a white racist word. <laughs> that's what he said <laughs> almost every episode. Anyway, with that said, that's all we got for you. You guys have a good evening. Peace.